now Jesus, Kumbaya, you will get all of the praise. Broad is the way, wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Narrow is the way, straight and narrow is the straight and narrow is the way. Narrow is the gate that leads to life. Destruction on one hand, life on the other. On this 10th day of July 2022, message I deliver is going to be a bit cold. Cold in more ways than one. I don't pick these messages. The Lord just give them to me. My job is to deliver them. I open by saying that I lived in Southern California in the greater Los Angeles Standard Metropolitan Statistical Area. Ten years. Eleven million people lived back to back, door to door, in a contiguous geographical area. Statisticians told us that 70% of those 11 million people did not have their names on any church roll. And the remaining 30% that did have their names on church roll represent a small fraction of those that were in daily attendance, weekly attendance in the church services of Southern California. I thank God that I can say that during those 10 years, I had a perfect attendance record in Sunday school and church. I don't want to present my record in any boastful manner at all. But I do want to share with you the facts of my experience in that region. And I learned and discovered over my many years of preaching that you cannot have Jesus without his church. Jesus and the church go together. And there are four conditions for church membership. Now, I'm not talking about the universal church. I'm not talking about the Catholic church. I'm not talking about the Methodist church. I'm not talking about the Seventh-day Adventist church or the Jehovah Witnesses church. I'm talking about the church that Jesus founded in Palestine in the year 33 AD. I'm talking about the New Testament church. Get that straight now. In order to become a member of the church that Jesus established, The first condition is to have a regenerate heart, a heart that has been touched by the Spirit of God, a regenerated heart. First condition for church membership. The second condition for church membership, second qualification for church membership, is that you must have a confession of faith. You have to tell it. You have to tell somebody, anybody, everybody, that you are a believer in Jesus Christ. You have to tell them 
in your walk and in your talk. That's the confession of faith that makes you a member of the church that Jesus started. The second, the third, con the third condition for church membership is the reception of baptism. Just as Jesus submitted himself to the baptism of John, all believers in Jesus oh, must be must receive baptism. Not just casual baptism, not just optional baptism, not just sprinkling baptism, but baptism by, <clears throat> by immersion. No shortcuts. And the fourth and final condition for church membership is to live the Christian life. My friend, when you become a member of Jesus' church, and if you or if he or her go around living like the devil, you have thrown away your church membership. I want to move on to the modes of admission into the church, how the three ways to get into the church. But I want to just review the conditions for membership. Number one, a regenerate heart. Number two, confession of faith. Number three, the reception of baptism. Number four, living the Christian life. You cannot have Jesus without his church. Well, how, Reverend, do I get into the church? The three ways. The first way to get into the church is by letter. You carry a letter from the church that you left to the church that you want to join. Give it to the pastor and tell him you want to unite with the fellowship of the church by letter. Pastor will examine that letter and after the examination is conducted, an officer of the church may move the congregation to accept your membership based on your letter. First mode of admission. The second, uh, second uh, mode of admission into the church you can come and become a member of the church as a candidate for baptism. Once you're baptized, uh, receive the Lord's Supper, and you will be fellowshipped into the church that Jesus started. The third and final mode of admission into the church is Christian experience. And here's what that means. You can come to the church and when the pastor opened up the doors of the church and asked people to join, you can step up and say, Pastor, I choose to unite with the fellowship of the church based on my Christian experience. That means that you have been baptized. That means that you uh, have been a member of a like church. And that your experience with the master is what you rely on to become a member of the church. Having said that, Holy Spirit said, now you got to tell them what the church is. The church is not an organization. The church is not a building. The church is not a society. The church is not a club. The church that Jesus established. The church that Jesus established is a body of baptized believers who are associated with each other in the faith and in the fellowship of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the classical, traditional, standard definition of the New Testament church. A body of baptized believers 
associated with each other in faith and in fellowship of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm ready to take a text. Wow, 10 minutes gone. To give you a little message that I received. And get on out of here. Text for the message found. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 4, verses 28 through 30, where we find these words. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of a hill of the hill on which the city was built that they might cast him down headlong but verse 30 Jesus passing through the midst of them went his way What a loaded text. And I think I might just submit to you a portion of the complete text. I wanted to deal with the power of Jesus. I wanted to deal with persecution. I wanted to deal with the unanimity, the unity of those that were in this synagogue. But I think I'll just submit to you this subject, the rejection of Jesus. The rejection of Jesus. Now what we have in the setting of this text is the start of Jesus' preaching career. And he speaks in the church in Nazareth, the synagogue of Nazareth, his hometown. And he told them that the spirit of the Lord was upon him. And he went on to sanction the Old Testament record, citing the prophet Elijah. And uh, what did the, uh, what God did through Elijah? Jesus drew that up to the people in the congregation at the outset. He reminded them that there was a great famine. He reminded them that heaven had been shut up for three and a half years. And he told them about all of the lepers that were there, but that God had only healed one. And they, this text said, uh, they all and all they, the majority, not the not the majority, but the totality of the people in the synagogue became angry, and wrath, filled with wrath at Jesus' words. Now, my friend. Jesus spelled out his target population to them in his initial uh, appearance, in his initial message. His target population was the poor. We still have the poor among us, the broken hearted, <clears throat> people in captivity 
This is Jesus' target population. People that were blind, both physically and spiritually. And he also targeted people that were bruised by their slave masters. My friend, the agenda of Jesus made all the church folk says the text, full of wrath. And they rejected Jesus. Let me catch my breath here and back up and tell you that the community, the township of Linden, Alabama, is a little hamlet is totally consistent with what the statisticians said about the 12 million in greater California, greater Los Angeles. 70% don't have their names on any church road. They're going the broad way. The gate it's wide open. They rejecting, they are rejecting Jesus. This is no new thing. It was necessary that he be rejected. And I might tell you why a little bit later, but I want to tell you who rejected him first of all. Matthew tells us in chapter 8, 34 of his book that he was rejected by the Gergesenes. He says, Matthew chapter 8 and 34, that the whole city came out to meet Jesus and when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart from their coast. The Gergesenes wanted him out of town, flatly rejected him. Mark 6, 48, Mark 6 and 3, rather. Mark 6 and 3 tells us about the rejection of Jesus in his hometown of Nazareth, as did our text. But Mark used these words. Use these words. He said, uh, Mark 6 and 3, the people said of Jesus, is not this the carpenter? Son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judah, and Simon, are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. No question. He was rejected. And he was despised. Chief priests, rulers, rejected him. Uh, Luke, Luke 17 and 25 says, But first he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. My friend, this 2022, 21st century generation is rejecting Jesus wholesale, no sale. And my friends, they are on the broad way to destruction. Let me tell you how it happens. Let me tell you how it happens. Jesus and all of his children have an enemy in the devil. And the devil has agents. 
And another thing you need to know that you're no match for the devil. The devil has supernatural power. The devil is a cast out angel. And, 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 and no man or woman is a match for the wiles and the trickery and the, invent this word, and the sneakery of the devil. He said to Eve, you will not surely die. You just come on and go along with my thinking. You just come on and go along with my reasoning. And he persuaded Eve. And he's persuading some of my closest kinfolks, some of my closest nearby kinfolks. He is persuading them. But it's all right to stretch the truth just a little bit. It's all right to go a little bit down the road to destruction and then turn and come back. He has clever arguments, ways and means of convincing or uh, God's children, good and bad. God has good children, he has bad children. But the devil has a way to persuade those. He might come through a false church, a false religion, but the only way you or I or any child of God can be a match for the devil is to turn him over to Jesus. Jesus will aid you in your struggle to be good. He will aid you in your struggle to be wise. He will aid you in your struggle to be just. He will aid you in your struggle to be truthful. Because that's the way God works. He works in truth. He works in goodness. He works in justice. He works in wisdom. They're all equal to holiness. My friend, they rejected Jesus. I might give you a little bit more of this next week. But let me get it out of your way after I give you this scripture here. John 5 and 43. Thank you. Jesus speaks. And this is what he says. John 5 and 43. He says, I am come in my father's name. Ye receive me not. Will you receive him today? And get on the street called straight. And go on into the straight and narrow way. By saying the sinner's prayer in these words. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. And I believe that Jesus died on the cross to forgive me of my sins. And I am sorry for all the wrongs that I have done. I ask you to forgive me. I now accept your gift of eternal life and I thank you for your love. Thank you for, for your forgiveness. And I thank you for the new life that I will have in Jesus Christ. And from this day forward, I choose and commit myself to follow you in Jesus' name. My friend, if you're ashamed to own Jesus, he's going to be ashamed to own you. Don't reject him. Receive him. And I pronounce upon you the benediction, the Jude benediction, which says, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy, now unto him, the only wise God, Jesus, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. 
Don't reject Jesus. Get on the ship of Zion. Sail on home. Goodbye.